Dr. Lindsay Doe here, clinical sexologist and host of this Sex Curious show, Sexplanations. An older white man asked me to make this episode, which is in part about older white men. Have you heard of fawning? You know how there's fight or flight when faced with a dangerous or scary situation, your sympathetic nervous system responds by either fighting or fleeing, moving away from the situation. Fight or flight, fight or flight. There's also two other F responses that may happen. Freeze, not moving at all, and fawn, F-A-W-N. Fawning is a subconscious response to a situation that triggers fear to protect oneself. In this case, the person becomes as likable as they can be to the perceived threat. They may not know it, but the rationale is, if I'm good, sweet, valuable, a bringer of joy, then I won't get hurt. I think of a literal fawn, doe-eyed cuteness, tiny baby delicate Bambi stotting. It might not deter a wolf or a forest fire, but hunters probably take pity and back off. Fawning actually comes from the old English begnyen? meaning rejoice, exult, be glad. You're consciously or subconsciously afraid, so you act cheerful or at the very least cooperative. Some of you will start to notice this tactic in your own lives, either as someone who fawns or knows people who do. For those of you who do it, my notes are short. Fawning is often a trauma response to abusive environments or relationships. Your little kid brain automatically showed exaggerated kindness and geniality in order to deter unwanted behaviors like violence. Unfortunately, Fawning, just like fighting, can cause significant problems in life. Saying yes when you want to say no, giving unsolicited advice, doing things for others that they can do for themselves, seeking praise and approval, making drastic sacrifices for others, and partnering with people who are emotionally unavailable. People who fawn tend to do so in all areas of their lives, even when there isn't a threat. So their family lives, romance, work, school, etc. Deep breath sigh out to get your nervous system stable. Please ask for help here, either from support groups or counseling or both. There's a better way. For those of you witnessing fawning, this episode is actually for you. The Society Pages from 2015 published findings from OkCupid Analytics, the dating site, which suggest that heterosexual women at most ages prefer dating men no more than eight years older or younger, whereas, quote, Men show decided preference for younger women, especially as the men get older. As in generally, heterosexual men aim for women in their 20s and 30s throughout their whole lives. Here's how fawning might play into this dynamic. If you, the older man, approach a much younger woman, she likely thinks of you as a father figure or grandfather figure. She may even feel relieved that she can have a non-sexual relationship with a man because of course you wouldn't think of her like that. She's young enough to be your kid. She treats you like a human and you feel great because this young woman is giving you attention. So you say something like, let's get lunch, or can I take your photo, or where do you live? And now she's knowingly or unknowingly triggered. Someone who is supposed to be safe old grandpa man is hitting on her, and she's got to think, are all men perverts? Did I do something wrong? How can I get out of this situation without disrespecting my elders? Initiate fawning. In an effort to control the situation, to keep herself safe, she doesn't fight because you could hurt her. She doesn't run. She could be chased or stalked. She doesn't freeze because that would risk angering you and retaliation. She fawns. She asks you what books you like and what you're up to later, maybe even trying to get clues as to whether or not she misread your intentions so that she can go back to feeling safe. Other times, she will fawn herself into a full-blown relationship, marriage, kids, etc., not realizing that what she thinks is Twitter patient that is actually her physiological reaction to a similar but traumatic situation from the past. Of course, this is not the explanation for every older man interacting with a younger woman or every person with trauma or every outgoing human. Anyone can have a fawn response. Anyone can trigger the response. The older man, younger woman dynamic is just the scenario that I see and hear about often. Most women have been abused by men or know women who have been abused by men. So we're all very sensitive to circumstances in which there are men slash danger. We've experienced trauma. We're watching out for it, even if we're not conscious of it. If you interact with unwanted sexual attention, romantic attention, physical touch, inappropriate conversations, or the like, you may notice that the other person, in this case, a woman, 
becomes really engaged, really engaged, not fighting with her words, telling you to go to hell or using some excuse to get you to back off, not fleeing by grabbing her things and getting as far away from you as possible, not freezing, though this is the case a lot during sexual violence. Her voice becomes friendly and she compliments you about something or takes interest in something you did or said. She kind of flirts. This is not because she wants to fuck you. Let me rephrase that. It could be that she wants to fuck you, but it's unlikely. And if she did, that could be fawning too. <laughs> when we are afraid and our fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response kicks in, the body also activates us to think and act quickly. Heart rate increases, the liver releases stored energy, the lungs pump more oxygen, and digestion slows down so that more focus can go to the systems actually needed in crisis. The sympathetic nervous system preps us to react to danger and alerts the immune system to be on standby to repair the damages if anything happens. Our reflexes, endurance, strength, and vision are all elevated, which entails dilated pupils, widening pupils. Wait, isn't that what happens when someone is experiencing attraction, desire, and a need to reproduce? As in this person is going to look breathy, healthy, and deeply interested when it might actually be the opposite. Blame the 80s movies, the patriarchy, Chad, I don't care. Let's just fix it. Don't say something to a woman that you wouldn't say to a man. This is my plea to check yourself. Consider that she's not being nice because she wants you to ask her out, but instead because she's afraid that you will. Fawning is very real very easy to misread and can be really detrimental. I fawn almost every day to cope. People make sexually aggressive comments toward me or gestures and I smile with an awkward giggle and ask them how their day is going as if they didn't just assault me. Sometimes I don't have the mental fortitude to stand up for myself or correct another person's behavior. It's exhausting and I don't want to be a teacher, parent, police officer to my community, especially when the result could be them thinking that I'm a bitch. Some of this is because fighting, fleeing, and freezing didn't serve me in the past. Some of it is because of the past trauma that instilled a need to fawn. It's why this episode exists. I teach it here. I hope that you trust me, that behaviors change, and hopefully there is less fawning because there's less to be afraid of. Stay curious. Thank you to everyone at patreon.com slash explanations for making this episode possible, both in the writing researching aspect and the funding. You mean so much to us. The Society Pages from 2015 published findings from OK... Oh, man. Attraction, desire, and the need to reproduce two. We're almost done. Ooh, my stomach is growling. I'm wearing a blanket, so it makes me real hot.